Um, frustrated and proud. Um, I don't think we did a great deal in the last 15 minutes to really put the nail in their coffin in some ways to try and get that, to try and really put it to bed, the game. But it was, uh, I felt there was a period in the second half, there was a 15 minute spell where we were very, very good. And it, I think it's only chance came from that. Um, and then if you don't take your chances in that middle section of the second half when you're winning 1-0, the last 15 minutes was always going to be unpredictable. We ended up playing 12 extra minutes, um, which is difficult because obviously they, they put the 10 on and they added two during that. Um, it's weird how they started adding minutes on for them. I thought psychologically for my players when they defended the way they had to see 10 minutes go up when there was only four minutes with the change of the assistant referee and the other three minutes was where the referee waited for their sub to get ready to be made the sub. I've never in... 300 odd games, seeing a referee wait for a substitution to come on with an injury. I don't know what he was thinking. He waited for a minute to let him make a sub. When we tried to do it, he played on. <laughs> and then he adds the time on. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. I've not seen the sending off. I thought at the time it wasn't. I've, I've seen it from a different angle. It looks probably a red. Probably. Um, I think his leg's gone straight. Not, He's turned his back and gone with a straight leg. But I've seen equally just as bad tackles against some of my players today that just went unpunished. But I thought the mentality of the players, I thought the fans were unbelievable. I really do. The noise inside the valley today, they stuck behind their team. It was difficult to take in that 95th minute with that ball. And when you see it back, it's, we've all got our men. It's come off their shin onto Crofty's, back off his shin, through Crofty's legs and dropped to him perfectly. And that's not a lack of organisation, a lack of appetite. Sometimes when you play the percentages, they do drop for you. And, and they drop for them in the last few minutes. But I don't remember Deck making a save in the second half. Really. I don't know if you can remember any saves. You made one or two early on in the first half, but not a great deal in the second. We look very comfortable against a team that in phenomenal form. Um, and credit to them. Just been saying there in the in the in the games that I've been here, we've not played any team below us, and we're halfway in the table. That's an amazing stat. Scary in some ways, I think. That, and I could be guessing because I've not really seen where the tables lie. But I, I think since we've walked in the door, every team we've played has been above us, and we've still got games in hand on sixth, and we're still six points behind, and we're building momentum, and we're getting fitter, and we're getting stronger, and we're becoming more unified. And the fans and the players, there's a connection, there's a drive, there's a determination to make them proud. And there's a communication and there's a, an appetite to sing and drive this team over the line. And we're going to need everybody over the next two months because it's going to be a rocky road. And we're going to, as we've seen, we've clearly seen that nobody's going to help us. Nobody's going to help us. So, we'll have to do that. It's been probably easy for fans to forget today that because it was a late equaliser, it is still six six games unbeaten now. And yeah, but you see, up. but I don't think the fans, even when they scored, they stayed behind the team. Even when the whistle blew at the end, they booed the referee, and still they clapped our players. They were unbelievable, unbelievable. Players are lucky. Uh, Jake Forster cast you another assist. Ricky Holmes, who must feel almost like a new signing. Yeah. I thought Jake was one of the best players on the pitch. Time is on, but and again, all of our substitutions today—not one of them subs were tactical subs. So no, Tommy Adam, Chicks, was Ill. Chicks was ill. Jake's calf, and um, I've got the other ones now. Ricky. And Ricky couldn't play any more than seventy-five minutes because obviously it's his first game in in two and a half months. So it's it was a big ask to do so. So we're, every sub that we made were were forced. To stick Jacko back at left back. Yeah. Seen him play that position for a few years. No, no. He, he said to me, "How quick is the winger?" I said, "Quicker than you." <laughs> <laughs> Jacko is is one of the best people I've met in football. He's a top top fella, top fella. He'd, he'd go and go for this club. He really would. He'd do whatever it takes to make this club successful. You've had an interesting week. You, you went and met with some fans on, on yeah. Thursday. That saw something about that in the Times today. It sounded like you, you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, it was. Um, it wasn't a case of me really saying much. It was a case of listening um, and understanding the the, the the dimensions of what's been before. Um, 
and trying to get some sort of drive to take this football club collectively forward. There's been a, there's agendas everywhere, obviously, for, for different reasons. Um, there's a lot of passion, certainly along for a lot of people who have been with this club through through, through difficult times, obviously, the, being on the back of the valley and what people did to make this club great again. Um, so I just wanted to listen to what they had to say. And from that perspective, it, it, they said the things that I expected them to say. And I just want to make people proud. And I just want my players to make them proud as well. But like I say, it wasn't it wasn't a night for me to talk. It was a night for me to listen um, and learn. And uh, I learned certain aspects of it. The Times interview was p- penciled in for four or five weeks. <laughs> so it had no relevance on on the meeting the other day. I actually said to him before we started the meeting, I said, listen, I'm doing an inter- I did an interview on the Wednesday uh, with Henry to just about what I seen in the football club and, and how I want to take it forward. Um, and it was a case of, it was about the club and about the momentum and just telling people really where, how I've been treated. Personally, I can't talk about you or, or anybody else. It's not, it's not, I can only talk on how I have been treated and how I have massively fell, massively fell for all the passion and desire this football club stands for. And uh, I wouldn't be doing my job to the best of my ability if I wasn't trying to make us one common goal to make this club great again. Um, like I say, I, I, that's all I can do. I'll just be hopefully people just respect my honesty. Look ahead to, to Wimbledon now. Expect any bodies by Josh McGuinness? He's back. back. Yeah. Wimbledon, yeah. yeah. Any, else? yeah. Nathan's out. <laughs> <laughs> some more, more reshuffling. Yeah, some more reshuffling. Lewis Page has got two game ban, uh, so we'll still be out. Nathan will be out. Um, but here's what it is this time of year. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we won't be the only team getting teams players sent off, and. Uh, I have to take it on the chin. But we're doing, listen, one thing I can say, someone just said in there, the last three games we finished with 10 men on the pitch. So the ones who manage to stay on the pitch, they're certainly going to get fitter. Yeah, you've had a bit of bad luck, I guess, with injuries and red cards since you yep. your opening spell. Oh, sometimes it's a challenge. Just like finishing sixth would be a challenge. No, what's the point in doing it the easy way? It's not, it's not as fun when you achieve things. Ow.